So now we are going into the lungs. Okay, so we are going to discuss the lungs under the following headings. So it's a very big topic and this will be the part one of the lung uh, class. Okay, so first we are going to see about the introduction to the lungs. After introduction, we are going to see what are the external features, okay, so our parts, whatever, okay, so the external features with relations and what means what are the parts of the lungs with the relations, okay, next we are going to see about the root of lung, root of lung what is mean by root of lung then we can discuss about the fissures fissures and lobes of lung fissures and lobes of lung then we are going to discuss about the okay so root of the lung fissures of the lung then we are going to discuss about the important thing that is the internal structure of the lung okay how internally Okay, how internally the lung looks. Then we are going to see about the blood supply. Next about the nerve supply. Next about the lymphatic drainage. Very important for lungs. The lymphatic drainage is very important. So we will see in detail about the lymphatic drainage, right? Next, we are going to see about after lymphatic drainage, we are going to see the very important, very, very important topic that is the bronchopulmonary segments of lung. Okay, bronchopulmonary segments. Right? So, we are going to see about the bronchopulmonary segments of the lung. And here uh, uh, in this topic only I will discuss the relevant applied aspects of each topic. Okay. So, we are going to see the lungs under these headings. Okay. So, first introduction. What is lung? Lung is a pair of respiratory organs that is situated in the thoracic cavity on either side of the mediastinum. We know that our thoracic cavity. Okay. We know the thoracic cavity has a center part that is the mediastinum. On the either side of the mediastinum we have the lungs with the surface with its covering that is called as pleura. So, the lung is covered by the serous sac that is called as pleura. Okay. So, on either side of the lung, we, on either side of the mediastina, we have the pair of respiratory organ that is called as lung. Okay. So, it is a pair of respiratory organ. Right. That is the first point. Second point. Okay. So, we have two lungs on either side in that the right lung which is about little bit heavier when compared to the left sided lung. Okay. So, the the right sided lung is about 700 grams okay when compared to that the left lung will be the 600 grams okay so this is about this so the first point will be it is a pair of respiratory organ and the second point will be that it is the weighing about the 650 to 700 grams and the third point is that the lung is connected to the mediastinum or to the trachea and the heart by means of pulmonary vessels and the to the lung to the trachea by means means of the bronchi okay so the lung is connected to the trachea by means of your bron by the uh, bronchi and to the heart by means of the pulmonary vessels okay anyway that we will see in detail later so next point is the uh, lung will be like a prayer uh, it is like pink in color for the newborn Okay, but for the people who are living in the polluted areas, the lung will be like brown color with mottled appearance. Okay, so why? Because of the deposition of the carbon particles inside the lung. Okay, because of the uh, deposition of carbon particles that makes the lung to appear like the brownish black color. Okay, for, for the newborn if you see the lung will be pink color and if you see the, our lung will crepitate on touch. Why? Because, because of the inhaling air. Okay, air that makes the lung to crepitate on touch. But if you consider for the fetus or the stillborn babies, still they have not even taken a single breath, the lung will not crepitate on touch at in and it will sink in water but the adult lung or which are the lung which undergone the air exchange 
that will float on water okay that will float on water okay but the stillborn and the fetus the lung will not precipitate on touch and it will sink in water that is the important identity um, uh, um uh, important factor that they will use for the identification of the stillborn babies right so the stillborn babies lung will not precipitate on touch and it will sink on water and sink in water okay so these are the important things that you have to know in the introduction so it is a pair of respiratory organ and it weighs around 650 to 700 gram it is connected to the mediastinum uh, with the uh, by the pair primary bronchi and also with the pulmonary uh, and the pulmonary vessels with the heart and it is like a brownish black in appearance those who are in the you know because of carbon inhalation of the uh, carbon particles and the fifth point is that it will crepitate on touch and float on water who it which has undergone the air exchange but in the case of newborn or in the case of stillborn or the fetus it will not crepitate on touch and it will sink in water right so these are the points must know points you should know in the introduction if you go for the external features right so if you go for the external features it has so i have to know so external features so our heading next heading will be the external features in the external features okay so it has an apex it has an apex it has an base okay it has an apex it has an base and it has two borders that borders are anterior border and the posterior border okay and we have posterior border and if you go for the surfaces okay if you go for the surfaces we have two surfaces that is the costal surface costal surface and also the medial surface so these are the parts of the lung are the external features of the lung so the lung is one which has an apex base it has an border that is called as anterior border and the posterior border and the surfaces which have costal surface and the medial surface okay so consider this is our right lung okay so right lung which has it is an apex it is a pyramidal shape see if you see it is a pyramidal in shape it has an apex right the apex which is above upwards it is upwards right and this is the base okay this is the base so if you see here this will be the base right so the lung has an apex it has an base okay so apex base okay so base is also called has diaphragmatic surface okay so just keep your note the base is also called has sorry the base is also called has the diaphragmatic surface okay so now apex is over the base is over then we will go for the borders what are the borders see we have the lung has an sharp anterior border if you see here the anterior border is sharp okay and if you see the posterior border it is rounded okay so the and it has an anterior border which is sharp okay which is sharp and it has an posterior border which is rounded in appearance okay so apex base it has an anterior border it has an posterior border which is rounded and it is so the anterior and posterior borders are over next we will go for the surfaces okay so the surfaces we have the costal surface see the costal surface if you see it will be late rounded okay it is rounded and the convex it is rounded convex and it is laterally situated so this everything will be that this everything will be the the between the anterior border and the posterior border the everything will be the costal surface and this will be the medial surface between the anterior border and the posterior border medially will be the medial surface of the lung okay so the i have i will repeat this is the apex this will be the base this is the anterior border which is sharp and this is the posterior border this is the posterior border which is rounded it has an costal surface which is situated laterally and and the convex in shape and it has a medial it has a medial surface which is okay this is the this is the medial surface between the anterior border and the posterior border medially will be the medial surface but laterally will be the lateral surface which is convex in shape okay so these are the 
parts of the lung right so these are the external features of the lung now we will go one by one what is relation so we have seen the external features we will go for the relations of the lung okay if you go for the relations the apex okay the apex is related to the apex of the lung okay so you should know that whole the lung will be covered by uh, whole the lung will be covered by the pleura okay so that you should not forget it okay so the two pleura visceral pleura and the uh, parietal pleura so the apex the apex of the lung that is present just above the just that that will be uh, just present above okay above the first rib okay above the clavicle that protrudes above the clavicle will be the apical part of the lung okay Okay, so the apex of the lung will be related to the the part of the lung that is protruding above the first rib okay above the first rib will form the apical part of the lung okay so the apical part of the lung is related to just i'll draw a picture of the lung here okay then i'll start explaining okay So, okay. So now this will be the lung. So apex, base, okay, and this will be the anterior and the posterior border. So this will be the lateral surface, okay. So the part of the lung above the, so the part of the lung above the first rib, okay, above the first rib will forming the apex of the lung, and it is situated about. 2.5 cm above the medial end of the clavicle or 5 cm above the first costal cartilage so how we have to that extends okay the apical part of the lung will extend about 2.5 cm above the clavicle medial end of the clavicle okay or 5 cm above the first costal cartilage above the first costal cartilage so this is about the uh, and it is covered by a pleura that is called as cervical pleura. So the cervical pleura covers the apex of the lung as well as above the cervical pleura we have a membrane that is called as suprapleural membrane. So this suprapleural membrane will, will make the lung to not to puff up more, okay, not to puff up into the neck. Okay, so the suprapleural membrane limits the apex of the lung to puff up into the neck. That is one of the important thing and the apex of the lung will be covered by a membrane that is called as cover cervical by a pleura that is called as cervical pleura. Above cervical pleura we have a membrane that is called as suprapleural membrane. Now, and the extent also we have discussed 2.5 cm above the medial end of the clavicle and about 5 cm above the first costal cartilage. Now, we will go for the relations of the apex of the lung. Okay, if you see the relations of the apex of the lung, we have anterior relation. Okay, so the anteriorly we know. So, this is the apex of the lung we know and this will be the first rib, okay. So, this is the first rib. So, about the first rib, it extends about the Five, about the 5 cm okay about the costal cartilage first costal cartilage it extends above the 5 cm so whatever will be here will be the anterior relation and here will be the posterior lateral and medial relation of the first apex of the lung right so the anteriorly there will be the subclavian artery if you see here there will be the subclavian groove here okay so that will anteriorly there will be the subclavian artery okay subclavian artery and there will be the serratus anterior muscle so this will be there will be the serratus anterior muscle so anteriorly the apex of the lung is related to the subclavian artery as well as the serratus anterior laterally if you see Laterally, if you see, there will be the scalenus medius, sorry, not serratus anterior, it is the scalenus anterior muscle. I'll repeat, I'm sorry. Okay, so the anteriorly, it is related to the subclavian artery with the scalenus anterior muscle, right? Laterally, it is related to the scalenus medius muscle. 
okay and if you see posteriorly it is related to the tubercle okay it is it is the tubercle and if you see the posterior this will be the neck of the rib okay this will be the neck of the rib okay so the posteriorly it is related to the neck of the rib and and the structures related to the neck of the rib anyway i will tell you that so and medially it is related to the great vessels arising from the neck okay great vessels of the great vessels presence in the thorax okay very easy so the apex of the lung is related anteriorly to the subclavian artery with the <coughs> scalenus anterior muscle laterally it is related to the scalenus medial muscle posteriorly it is related to the neck of the rib and the structures related to the neck of the rib and medially it is related to the great vessels of the thorax right if you see so anteriorly we have seen it is by the subclavian artery subclavian artery and the muscle is the scalenus okay scalenus anterior muscle right so posteriorly if you see i told you neck of first rib right the neck of first rib will have the structures okay neck of first rib will have the structures will be very very important from medial to lateral we have sympathetic chain okay next one will be the posterior intercostal vein superior intercostal artery and ventral ramae of t1 okay ventral ramae of t1 no okay so these are the four structures that is related to the neck of the first rib so all the structures with the neck of the first rib will be relay will be the posterior relation of the apex of the lung then we know that laterally it is related to the muscle that is called as scalenus medius and anterior sorry medially it is related to the great vessels of the neck or great vessels of the thorax great vessels of the thorax so this is about the apex of the lung so apex of the lung location we have discussed one it is covered by the uh, pleura that is called as cervical pleura and it is separated from the neck by means of a membrane that is called as supra pleural membrane and next we have seen about the <coughs> relations that is anterior posterior lateral and the medial now we will go for the applied aspect of the apex of the lung if you see the applied aspect there is called a yeah, syndrome that is called as pan coast syndrome what is that syndrome that is called as so apex of the lung will be affected by a syndrome that is called as pan coast syndrome the pan coast syndrome is nothing but the cancer of the apex of the lung will cause the injury to will will be invaded to all these four structures that have the clinical futures accordingly means the apex of the lung if it affects the it affects the sympathetic chain that results in a syndrome that is called as the horner syndrome right next if you if it uh, in if it uh, affects the vein okay then it can and spread to the subclavian vein everything so that there will be edematous edematous engorging of the upper limb okay the venous congestion will be there if it invades the vein if it invades the artery there will be decreased subclavian uh, subclavian pulse or brachial pulse or radial pulse everything and if in, if it invades the thoracic nerve there will be the pain in the medial side of the arm forearm and the wasting of the intrinsic muscles of the uh, hand because of the injury uh, because of the involvement of the ulna now right so when the apex of the lung if it uh, apex of the cancer of the apex of the lung when it inverts the thoracic structures okay mainly thoracic structures that results in the symptoms according to the structures involved that cancer apex of the lung is called as pan coast syndrome okay pan coast syndrome that will be resulting in the formation i um, mean the horner syndrome involvement of the ulna nerve in resulting the wasting of the muscles of the hand edematous venous engorgement of the limb upper limb or otherwise the feeble pulse present in the uh, uh, 
brachial artery and the radial artery okay so this is about the apex of the lung right now we will go for the base of the lung so the base of the lung we know that the base of the lung is separated from the thorax by means of the right as well as the left dome of the diaphragm right so the right and the left dome of the diaphragm separates the base of the lung from the abdominal structures under the right lung the base under the right lung there will be the diaphragm and below that there is an organ that is called as liver right so the right dome of the diaphragm separates the base of the lung from the liver similarly the left dome of the diaphragm separates the base of the left lung from the structures like uh, stomach as well as the spleen right so the spleen and the stomach will be separated from the left uh, left lungs base by means of the left dome of diaphragm okay that's it nothing important in the this this much is enough in the base so the apex of the lung is very important the point we have discussed and the base just right and left dome of diaphragm under the right dome there will be the uh, liver and under the left dome there will be the stomach as well as the spleen okay now we will go for the anterior border okay so the anterior border will be the sharp okay the ante so consider this is the right lung and if i draw the left lung okay if i draw the left lung okay so this is the anterior border of the left lung and this is the anterior border of the right lung right so the uh, anterior border of the right lung will be straight okay will be straight and it is present anteriorly okay and it is the sharp border and the thin border sharp border thin border and it is vertical and okay but if you see the anterior border of the so uh, i can name this is the right lung and this is the left lung right so the left lung also the left lung in its anterior border presents a notch presents a notch that notch is called as cardiac notch cardiac notch of the left lung and it presents a protrusion below the cardiac notch that is called as lingula that is called as lingula so if i see so the right lungs anterior border will be sharp and uh, sharp and it is continuous and it is vertical okay but if in case of the left lung the anterior border presents a notch that is called as cardiac notch of the left lung and it presents a protrusion tongue shaped protrusion below down that is called as lingula so these are the features that is present in the anterior border of the right and the left lung right now if you go for the posterior border we already seen that the posterior border is rounded okay it is not like sharp it is blunt or rounded okay and it extends from okay and it extends from the c7 cervical vertebra to t10 vertebra okay spine of the c7 cervical vertebra to the t10 vertebra that is the extension of the posterior border okay now we will go for the surfaces okay so we have seen that costal surface and the medial surface right so the costal surface we know that the costal surface is rounded okay and it is present laterally and it is convex right so it is convex and it is present laterally and what will be the relation it is very easy it is related to the thoracic wall okay it is related to the thoracic wall and it is separated from the thoracic wall by means of a fascia that is called as endothoracic fascia right so the lead so the costal surface the costal surface of the right and the left lung is separated from the thoracic wall is related to the thoracic wall and it is separated from the thoracic wall by means of a fascia that is called as the endothoracic fascia what here we have seen in one membrane that is called as supra pleural membrane here because it is present above the pleura and here which is uh, which is surrounding the inner surface of the thoracic wall we have an fascia that is called has endothoracic fascia right so this is about the costal surface the so costal surface is related to the thoracic wall and it right the medial surface the medial surface we have to describe in detail because the medial surface we know that it is the it separates okay it is it is the surface that is related to the mediastinum okay but before that we have to know that the medial surface again we are dividing into two 
Okay, so that is the small posterior part, small posterior part that is called as vertebral part. Okay, vertebral part and the large anterior part, okay, that is called as mediastinal part, okay, mediastinal part and we have the hilum in it, okay, we have a structure, so the medial surface have the main three important structure, so we have an hilum in the medial surface and we have the small posterior part, small posterior part that is called as vertebral surface or the vertebral part of the medial surface and there is a large anterior part that is called as mediastinal surface of the mediastinal surface of the medial surface. So, the, the uh, whatever the hilum, uh, hilum and the uh, mediastinal part we will discuss in detail. I will tell you about the vertebral part which is similar for both the lungs. Okay. So, if you see that, so that we have discussed hilum will be there and there will be the large anterior part. Okay. This is the anterior border, right? So, there will be the large anterior part that is the mediastinal surface and hilum will be there and small posterior part will be there. The that will be the uh, vertebral part right so this vertebral part is related to both the lungs with the vertebra okay vertebral column right vertebral column consists of vertebra with the intervertebral disc right so the small post the post vertebral part is related to the vertebral column one second one it is related to the posterior intercostal vessels because that arises from there okay from the iota it will be going then anyway that we are discussed in our previous session also okay so posterior intercostal vessels and the greater and the lesser splanchnic nerves okay so the three structures that are related to the vertebral part mainly will be the vertebral column. Next one will be the posterior intercostal vessels and the next one will be the, our greater and the lesser splanchnic nerves. So, we have completed the vertebral part relations. So, now we will see about the hilum as well as the large mediastinal part in the medial surface, right? So, the, this is the picture that shows the medial surface of the right lung. So, this will be the anterior border, posterior border and this will be the medial surface. Okay, in the medial surface and the, this part will be the uh, vertebral part, leave it. Okay, and this center structure is called as the hilum. Okay, so hilum we will discuss in detail later. Okay, anyway the hilum has the superior pulmonary, sorry. It has the superior pulmonary vein, inferior pulmonary vein, pulmonary artery with epatrial bronchus, with hypatrial bronchus. Anyway, I will discuss it in our subsequently how the structures are placed here. Okay, so these are the structures in the hilum and the relation of the medial surface of the right lung. Okay, so the right lung will be related to here, there will be the, okay, here will be the right atrium, right? Here will be the related to the right atrium with the inferior vena cava. Here will be the right atrium with the inferior vena cava and here will be the superior vena cava will be opening here into the right atrium right and the superior vena cava and that is formed by the right as well as the left brachiocephalic vein that will join okay anyway it will be better if i draw in the blue color this one okay so this will be the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava right so this is the right and the left brachiocephalic vein then there will be the arch of asegas vein that will be opening into the superior vena cava right so, this is the superior vena cava, right? So, arch of asegas vein that will be arching over the hilum of the right lung, okay? And we have the trachea, right? We have the trachea, we have the trachea and we have the esophagus. Okay, so here we will have the esophagus, this one will be the trachea. Okay, so these are the structures. So now if you, if you see the nerves, there will be anteriorly, there will be the vagus nerve and posteriorly we have the yeah, posteriorly we have the sorry anteriorly we have the free 
phrenic nerve and posteriorly we have the vagus nerve. Posterior to the hilum we have the vagus nerve and anterior to the hilum we have the phrenic nerve. Okay, so now I will name it. This one will be the esophagus, right? Esophagus, trachea, right? And this one will be the uh, brachiocephalic veins, okay, right and the left to brachiocephalic vein brachiocephalic vein then this will be the superior vena cava here will be the inferior vena cava here will be the right atrium of the heart right this is the hilum and the nerves are the right phrenic nerve okay right phrenic nerve and here will be the right vagus nerve okay apart from the nerves there will be the sympathetic trunk also related to this okay sympathetic trunk also will be related to the right sympathetic trunk will be related to the mediastinal surface it actually here there will be the vertebral part and here the particularly this part will be the mediastinal part so everything this will be the medial surface of the right lung okay similarly i have to go for the left lung right so for the left lung posterior border right and here will be the anterior border with the cardiac notch and the lingula and that will be coming like this okay so this one and there will be the hilum right so there will be the hilum Okay, so hilum similarly it has superior pulmonary vein, inferior pulmonary vein, bronchus with the pulmonary artery. There we have the bronchus epitrial and the hypotrial bronchus but here only one bronchus principal, bro uh, sorry that is the same uh, lobar bronchus, sorry here the principal bronchus sorry. Okay, so this one will be the hilum, right? Now I have to draw the structure. So left side of the lung that is related to here the area that will be related to the left atrium and the left ventricle, right? So this area will be related to the left atrium and the left ventricle. From that we have the arch of iota, right? The arch of iota will be arching like this and it will be going back okay so here the uh, here the hilum is uh, is winding above winded above by the arch of iota and then it continues as the descending iota but here the hilum will be superiorly arched by the acegas vein which opens into the <coughs> which opens into the superior vena cava okay so now from here we have the common carotid artery as well as the subclavian artery right and then what are the other structures related are will be the same thing like trachea will be the okay so we have the trachea okay we have trachea and we have the impression of the we have the impression of the esophagus also and the two nerves if you see so anteriorly we have the phrenic nerve as usual we have the phrenic nerve and posteriorly we have the vagus nerve okay posteriorly we have the vagus nerve and it forms the recurrent laryngeal nerve also posteriorly we have the vagus nerve and anteriorly we have the phrenic nerve and same thing is left sympathetic chain is also related to it okay so this is about the relation of the right and the left lung okay so if you see the difference what is this what is the difference so the right lung is related to what are the if you take the heart here the right atrium will be related okay here the left atrium so uh, right lung and the left lung okay so right lung and this is the left lung okay if you see here the heart here the right atrium is related and here if we, it is the left atrium with and the ventricle left ventricle is related first point and if you see the second point on the mediastinal surface okay there the vessels will be here the superior vena cava with plus brachiocephalic veins right and the left brachiocephalic veins if you see here there will be the arch of iota right arch of iota with the descending iota descending iota arch of iota with its branches 
okay left subclavian as well as the left so i will name it okay so that it will be easier for you so this will be the trachea this will be the esophagus right this will be the phrenic nerve left phrenic nerve okay left phrenic nerve this will be the left vagus nerve okay so this will be the arch of aorta arch of aorta with left common carotid and the left uh, subclavian artery right then it, this will be the descending aorta this will be the descending aorta right so if you say so descend with branches arch of aorta with branches and this will be the with the descending aorta right then both side there will be the trachea both sides there will be so right lung is also related to trachea and left lung is also related to the trachea right and the right lung is also related to the esophagus and the left lung is also related to the esophagus right and it also consists of hilum this also consists of hilum and if you say the nervous structures nerve structures the nerve structures related are the right phrenic right phrenic vagus and sympathetic chain right sympathetic chain and if you see here this there will be the left phrenic left vagus and the left sympathetic chain left sympathetic chain so these are the parts that are related to the mediastinal surface of the right and the left lung so if we put together all we have completed the external futures and relations so the apex we have seen about how much it is above the apex of the lung is about 2.5 cm above the clavicle and 5 cm above the cos first costal cartilage and the base that is related to the diaphragm and the structure separating from it border anterior border um, so in that we have to mention about the cardiac notch and lingula in the left anterior border posterior border is rounded and it extends from c7 to t10 and the costal surface which is related to the thoracic wall and the medial surface again we are dividing into vertebral part and the anterior mediastinal part and the hilum the mediastinal part with the hilum we have seen here and the vertebral part will have the common relation that is to the vertebra greater and the lesser splanchnic nerves with the posterior intercostal vessels.